I'd like to introduce a special friend and colleague today, Sarah. Uh, Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, I'm happy to. I'm Dr. Sarah Kopelovich. I'm a clinical psychologist and an associate professor in the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Washington, which is based in the beautiful city of Seattle in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Sarah and I are together in Switzerland for a conference and we both got talking about mom guilt. Who doesn't experience mom guilt at some stage or another during their mom career? So Sarah, would you like to share what we were discussing um, about mom guilt? Yeah, I, well, first of all, the universality of mom guilt, that this is something that I think, uh, you know, most of us experience at some point and that this is a really stubborn uh, emotion. It's a really difficult one to shake. Um, and I had shared, you know, I had uh, both of my children when I was still in graduate school. And so between my coursework and all of my clinical hours that I had to put in, uh, all of my stipend was going to childcare. And I was, you know, really struggling to kind of feel like I was connecting with my daughter. Um, and she is an early riser, always has been an early riser. So my husband and I would take turns uh, getting up with her at uh, 4 a.m., 5 a.m., whenever she would wake up for the day when she was really young. And one weekend, it was my turn to sleep in, and I woke up and my husband and daughter were on the couch and they were reading together, and I thought, what a nice moment. I'm going to get in on this. And I snuggled right up to my daughter and she looked at me and she said, mommy, I want you to go back to bed and never wake up. And I was absolutely devastated. I thought I oh, bet. I'm working so hard to make a good life for her and for us. And, you know, I, you know, had to remind myself she's, not you know she's two years old this wasn't literal she doesn't know the implications of what she said and you know we all have our coping strategies my coping strategy is research so i immediately went to the you know psych info looked through the journals about what are the long-term outcomes of children of working mothers and sure enough all of the outcomes are positive right i mean we have you know, better educational attainment, they go farther in school, they tend to get higher paying jobs, they take on more creative jobs, um, you know, better, you know, kind of long term mental health effects. And so that was an enormous consolation to me and a reminder that oftentimes, you know, guilt is really an emotion mm -hmm. that helps us understand are we acting in ways that are aligned with our values and with society's values? And if I can check my values and make sure that my behavior is aligned with my values, then I need to look for other sources of the guilt. And so in that situation, I felt like the guilt is not because I'm doing something that's not right for me or my family. The guilt is because I'm feeling all of those social norms, all of those social pressures to be there 100% of the time with my daughter. And that's not something that I can do. And so you misinterpreted what your daughter said, right? She just wanted to say to you, I wish this moment did not pass. Yeah, she was having a moment with her dad yeah. and she was enjoying that moment. And that is sacred, right? That was a beautiful yes. thing. And, um, and so she just didn't need me or want me there at that moment, but the way that it came out and the way that I interpret the way that it came out, I mean, it really tapped into all of that guilt that I had been carrying from all of those, you know, hours away from her. It was your, your interpretation of the experience. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, um, and you know, why, why is mom guilt, uh, how can it affect moms adversely? Well, I, as a psychologist, I like to say there are no bad emotions, but there are certainly painful emotions. And so guilt is an incredibly painful emotion. It is. Uh, and like I said, it's a stubborn one. It's very difficult to just kind of snap our fingers and say, oh, no, you know, no mom guilt. And I'd be lying if I was, if I were to say that I don't continue to have mom guilt. Um, 
as I said, I think it's really important to look at what's the emotion trying to tell us and to really identify, you know, is it me? Is it coming from the outside? And if it's, you know, once we can sort of do that exploration, then we can start to understand what's at the root of that guilt. Hmm. Um, and I think that's really, it's difficult to do solo. It can be really helpful to have other moms to talk to, you know, mom mentors. I'm really big on mom mentors in your industry um, to, you know, seek professional help. Um, if that's indicated, when that's indicated, there are great self-help resources out there. Uh, so I think really tapping into what's this emotion trying to tell me and then how do I want to respond to that emotion? And and again, if we don't deal with it, I suppose moms, I've, I see moms who, and I'm sure you do as well, who become quite anxious or they become depressed and also the impact on work productivity, right? Because you have to get that balance with your own thoughts. Right. I like to think about we only have so much capacity for these painful emotions before we get overwhelmed. And so a really popular metaphor in my line of work is the bucket, the stress bucket, in this case, the guilt bucket, right? And so there are going to be times in our lives, let's say we have a deadline at work or we are taking care of an aging parent, when our guilt will be higher because we feel like we're not performing mm -hmm. in all of those domains equally well, which by the way, it just isn't possible, right? And so at that time, that guilt hose that's going into that bucket, it may be like a fire hose. And so we're gonna quickly gonna become overwhelmed by that guilt. And that could look like a panic attack. That could look like blowing up at your children or your spouse. Um, at other times, it'll be more of a drip. And I think what's so important is to check your levels mm -hmm. and to look for opportunities to release some of that guilt. And when I say release the guilt, it's not all on us as moms to find ways to, you know, to do that inner work around, around guilt, right? There's also a social component exactly. to guilt. So what can our employers do? to help us be productive and be present in the workplace? What can our community, our village do to help us to balance everything that we're trying to balance? Um, and then how can I learn how to say no and feel okay with that? Yeah. Um, there was a, a commencement speech that was given by Shonda Rhimes that I viewed and she was recounting a story of People, it was not just one time, oftentimes people will come up to her and say, how are you doing all of this? You know, you're executive producer of all of these programs. You've got children, you know, how do you, how do you juggle all of this? And she said, I don't just know that if you see me performing well in one area, it means I'm failing in another area of my life. What a burden to carry though. Right. And so the, when I heard that, my first emotion was relief because I felt like she normalized a feeling that I had, you know, that I carried that, oh, you know, I fail too, right? I'm a failure in X, Y, or Z area. But I check that thought, you know, what does it mean? If you're worried about being a failure, you're probably not failing because you care too much about mm -hmm. it, right? That that worry actually says something about your investment. Correct. So I did a little reframe on that because I thought it was, you know, in general, really good advice that, you know, none of us are actually performing at 100% nope. in every area. But if we're not performing at 100%, it doesn't mean we're failing. True. It probably just means we're disappointing people. And that's okay. It, in fact, if we are going to be people who have healthy boundaries, we're gonna to have to disappoint folks sometimes. So our, my, my thought is, how do I decide who I'm going to disappoint today, right? And there are times when it's okay to disappoint my kids. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about, you know, if I can't be there to, I mean, often I'm not there to help them with homework after school. And we talk about why that is. But if it's, you know, graduation, eighth grade graduation, 
I flew back across the continent to make sure I was there for that. Oh, there you go. Um, so it's just about knowing who can I disappoint today. So I suppose life is just a balancing act, isn't it? And managing expectations right. um, of ourselves and of others and how we get that balance. So, Sarah, that was so wonderfully said. Um, can you give us some top tips or top steps, you know, just one, two, three, four, five as to what moms in these situations can do to feel better about their their situation? Well, I'm always a little skeptical with something like as big as this to kind of uh, reduce it down to, you know, a certain number of steps because I do think it's 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 work that I do maybe every day um, on some level, uh, even if I'm not conscious of it. But I do think that awareness, bringing awareness, naming the feeling is incredibly powerful. There's actually research that shows that just by naming an emotion, we can reduce the intensity of that emotion. Right. So when I'm feeling mom guilt because I've disappointed my child or I totally screwed up dinner um, or whatever it is, I name it. I'm feeling really guilty. I'm feeling like a bad mom or I think I'm a bad mom. And then I check that out and say, you know, what is the evidence that that's that I'm a bad mom, right? And usually, and what's the evidence that I'm a, I'm not a bad mom? And also, can I deconstruct that binary? Right? It's not it's not that I'm a hundred percent a good mom or a hundred percent bad mom. So um, that's some of the work that I think is really important for us to do. Name it to tame it, and then the second piece is I think how can we look to our community to support us. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think a lot of times when we hear about proposed solutions to mom guilt, one of the solutions that I hear all the time is self-care. And self-care is incredibly important. Those are the release valves on that guilt bucket, mm -hmm. right? Or that stress bucket. And community care is equally important. And I think very often in our society, in, in, in my society in the United States, um, it's really difficult to tap into a community to help you out and for, you know, to really feel like you're part of that. Um, and so find your people, find your moms, find your other find your social parents. networks. Yeah. And that has been hugely helpful, both for normalizing and then for all of the pragmatics. There are a lot of logistics that go along with raising children. They do. They do. So it's almost like raising awareness in our society, not just um, in ourselves, but also it's, it's about changing how society views moms. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for being with me. And as ever, if you have learned something useful, like it, share it, tell it, tell it to all the people you know. Thank you for watching.